Well, good morning, everyone. And out there on Zoom. Um, I don't think there are any extra notices. Um, you have what was in the notice sheet. So uh, I will just hand straight over to Sola. Thank you. A very warm. Uh, the Methodist Prayer Handbook for this year, um, and you may find it useful for your daily devotions um, with the appointed reading for the day as well as um, some prayers for the particular day of a month. Um, so if you would like to have this, please um, ask Irene for this. And also a little reminder about our church council meeting um, this Wednesday. 7.30 p.m. Um, everyone is invited um, to join. Everyone is welcome to join. Um, but when it comes to taking votes, only those who are um, members of the church council can vote. But we will um, have very good discussions about our future uh, of the church, um, what areas of our uh, life of this church that we need to focus on for the future. Um, so all um, suggestions will be welcome. So um, you are welcome to that um, meeting on Wednesday. Um, yes, um, it is on Zoom. It is not in the church. It will be um, on Zoom. So it is easier for you to join if you would like. Um, the link... Um, um, yes, um, Mike has the link and he will um, send it. Uh, if you can contact Mike, Mike will give you the link. Uh, I'll send it out to everyone, okay? So everyone will get a link and you are welcome. Now let us pause for a moment and uh, prepare ourselves to offer our worship to God. And we begin our worship by singing all heaven declares and followed by that we'll sing be still and know we stand to sing all heaven declares. Mm -hmm. The glory of the risen God.
Please be seated. Now we come before God in our prayers. Let us give our thanks and praise to God. Father, most holy and loving, we come into your presence now, bringing ourselves just as we are, without any preconditions, without any pretensions. We come just as we are. In the knowledge and understanding of your love for us, which is constant, and of your peace and presence, and your goodness and mercies, with which you are filling each and every day of our lives. We come with a deep sense of thankfulness, loving God, because you are so faithful. Times and seasons and everything around us is changing, but you come to us as a changeless God with the same offer of love, grace, and forgiveness for all that we want to give you our thanks and praise. We thank you, Father, above all, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, in our lives, for his life, for his death, for his resurrection, and for his active presence among us. We want to give our thanks and praise to you. We thank you, Father, for the gift of your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit in our lives, your Holy Spirit in our church, your Holy Spirit in our world, your Holy Spirit always leading us into all truths and urging and inspiring us until we find our rest and peace in you. For all those marvelous gifts to us, Father, we give you our thanks and praise. Now, as we come together as your children to worship together, we pray that you will make this time such a blessing for each one of us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We remain seated and join in singing our next worship song, God Forgave My Sin.
now we hear from the scriptures. First from um, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 12 to 20, which you'll find on page 1091. The resurrection of the dead. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no res resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all the others. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all those who have fallen asleep. And from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, reading verses 17 to 26. Blessings and woes. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there. And a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who has come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured. And the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you. When, you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. Amen. Thanks be to God.
We thank God for his words for us. And thank you to Dave for reading those words for us. Let us pray. Father, most holy and loving, we give you thanks for your words for us. They always give us meaning and purpose for our lives. Now, as we hear your words and share them, Father, we pray that you will be with us in your spirit, speaking to us in your spirit, we pray, Father, so that our understanding of you will be broadened and our faith deepened. Speak to us now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. It is worth noticing once again the final verse of the first reading from Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. This is how that passage ends and the Paul's um, exhortation for um, us, and particularly when he was um, writing this to the Christians in Corinth, he was very, very concerned about the watered down kind of belief system that was existing there. They all accepted the message that the apostles was, uh, were bringing to them, and they were quite happy to follow Jesus Christ. But at the same time, they were holding on to some of their old belief patterns in that they were not really comfortable with the resurrection, uh, the thought of the resurrection or the promise of the resurrection that Jesus Christ offered. And then Paul, as a trained rabbi, was giving his arguments, if this is this is how it is, like a very um, skilled uh, lawyer. He was presenting a case before the people. And then finally, he says these words, if only, if in this life only, we have hope in Christ. If we are um, simply believing in this life alone, that we will be with Christ, then we are most pitiable because there is a life after that is promised to us. And the resurrection is one area of our Christian life. Even us are confused or having no idea whatsoever. And it can be more baffling to those who have no Christian faith at all. How can someone be resurrected? It is very, very tricky area for most people. But we are here not to argue about what Paul says or what somebody else says. It is all about trusting in the word of God. It is all about trusting in the promise of Jesus Christ. The raising up of all believers in the last day is a promise given by Jesus Christ to all believers. The new life that starts when we be begin to believe in Jesus Christ continues forever. From this life into the life that is to come. And when Christ comes, every believer will be resurrected and that we will be with Christ once again. So those words are not my words or somebody else's words. It is the word of Jesus Christ, and we simply trust in those words. And a similar kind of trust is required of all disciples and followers of Jesus Christ as he was now giving a sermon on the plain. Luke gives us a balanced view of life and its blessings to all believers. Unlike Matthew, it is all blessing in the Beatitudes or the Sermon on the Mount. Here are um, so many practicalities and realities of life is being addressed by Jesus Christ. And the disciples particularly, it is very 
interesting to um, imagine, use our imagination and picture the situation when Jesus went to this spot by the waters. It was very plain. And then there were a large crowd. Jesus invited his disciples to gather around him because there was so much he wanted to teach them and tell them. But at the same time, he didn't want to exclude the other people. So sitting from where he was, or perhaps standing, Jesus started addressing the disciples so the others can also hear. And everyone we can imagine gathered around him were not that rich or people who had more than what they required at the time. They were ordinary peasants and poor people. And particularly the disciples were ordinary fisher folk. And to them, Jesus was giving these words, blessed are you poor for, your, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and cast you out for your, cast you out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Whatever you suffer now for the sake of the kingdom, then you will have your rewards in God's kingdom. It is something that is promised for the future, for those who suffer and experience all sorts of humiliations and depravity because they are followers and believers of Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say to those who have everything they need, but woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, for you shall hunger. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. It is a warning for those who are enjoying everything great at the present life. It is not that they shouldn't enjoy those things in this life. God gives all those areas of enjoyment for the benefit of human beings. But it is a reminder, if your life is so much focused on that alone, then you can expect more things completely contrary to what you are experiencing now. So many people in the past have attempted to redraft the Bible. One person I have read recently was a Hindu a Hindu man, but well-educated, very well-educated. This is going back 200, 300 years ago. Well-educated, and this was in resistance of the missionaries of that time who were active in India. And the missionaries, particularly from the West, they had a very... Um, low esteem and idea about the heathens. But they were well-educated people. They may not be Christians or followers of Jesus Christ, but they were well-educated. So in protest of one particular missionary, this Hindu man started reading the Bible, understanding the Bible, and then in his own way, reduced the Bible, redacted the Bible to a small portion. And then he came over to Britain. He came over to Britain and stayed here and campaigned that here is a new version of the Bible. Well, it didn't go well, but there is a small irony of that. You may have heard about T. and T. Clark, the publishers, Christian publishers. They were based in Edinburgh um, until recently. But now they have shifted their head office in London, Bloomsbury area. 
And where the head office now um, situated was where exactly this man 200 odd years ago was living. And he was um, giving to people in Britain his version of the Bible. There are several people who have attempted to reduce the Bible because they couldn't accept the downside of human experience, the agony, the pain, and all sorts of human experiences, because they believed this life is here for us to enjoy. So there must be blessings. We must talk and focus on the blessings that come our way. But truly and honestly, if we take out those parts from the scriptures, the scriptures will make no sense to us. There is blessing, there is curse. There is enjoyment and there is blessing. At the same time, there is a difficult and pitiable time. And life will lose its meaning if there is only one part of things that we get to experience in our lives. When there is happiness all the time, there is no happiness at all. We can't experience happiness without something to contrast happiness with. And that is what Jesus Christ is saying here to his hearers, not condemning the rich, not condemning those who have all things going well for them, but it is a reminder for them, if you enjoy, if you focus your minds only on those things, then woe to you. Woe in the sense pity, pity to you. Because things may change and things will be different in the kingdom of God. Jesus is inviting all believers to look at where to find real happiness. And he starts with the blessings. Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now. And these are the people we meet in our everyday life more than those who have everything um, for them, for their lives. It is to start with them and to find God's kingdom at work among those people. One of the directors of Christian Aid, once visiting um, Haiti um, after uh, a natural disaster, this is many, many years ago, came back and reported, I met a woman who lost everything who lost their, her house and home and uh, all her family. Everyone was lost in that disaster. And she had lost everything that she had. There was nothing to support and sustain her. But she found time when I met her to sit with me and talk to me. And uh, her welcome, the welcome that she gave me even at the time of great loss and pain was so memorable. I have never seen that openness anywhere in my life. It is among those people we find the true value of the kingdom of God. Jesus is inviting us to focus our priorities on those areas, among those people who have nothing to offer much but perhaps to offer love and friendship and that kind of openness for us, where we find God's kingdom is active. The words of St. Paul is inviting us to trust the word of God. It talks about resurrection, but it is sure it will happen. It will happen to all believers. There isn't a single person who is alive now that we can meet or hear as a testimony who had been resurrected. It will happen on the day when Christ comes. 
Christ was resurrected, if we believe in Christ, we believe his resurrection as well. Or if I can put it the other way, we believe Christ because he is risen, he was resurrected. If we deny his resurrection, we are denying Christ. That is as simple as that. We do not know how intricate these things work, but we simply trust the words of Christ. And also we are invited to look at the instruction of Jesus Christ for all of us, all believers. The kingdom of God is at work. Even to this moment, it is at work in our lives and in the lives of people who are around us. So let us open our hearts and minds to those places where God's kingdom is at work. And the message is very clear to all believers and those who are looking for something. You may be poor now. You may be hungry now. You may experience exclusion by others. But in my kingdom, everyone is welcome. Everyone will be happy. Everyone will be full. Everyone will have all the blessing in their lives. These are the words of Christ. So we give thanks to God for these words for us this morning. And we simply trust and rely on those words. Amen. Thanks be to God. We sing our next hymn, Blessed are the pure in heart, and we remain standing after the hymn for our communion. Stop. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us therefore keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, So let us in a moment share the peace of the Lord um, in gestures and signs to those who are around us. Peace be with you, Mike. Peace. The Lord be with you. And also. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you, gracious Father, our maker and sustainer. You created the heavens and the earth and formed us in your own image. Though we sinned against you, your love for us was constant. And you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be the savior of the world. Sharing our human nature, he was born of Mary and baptized in the Jordan. He proclaimed your kingdom by word and deed and was put to death upon the cross. You raised him from the dead. You exalted him in glory. And through him, you have sent your Holy Spirit, calling us to be your people, a community of faith. And so with angels and archangels and all the choirs of heaven, we join in the triumphant hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, we praise you. That on the night in which he was betrayed, our Savior Christ took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, and proclaiming his eternal sacrifice, we offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving as we declare the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. Send down your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him forever and bring us with the whole creation to your eternal kingdom. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. These gifts of God for the people of God. May, May Jesus Christ be praised. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word and I shall be healed. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger, and those who believe in me shall never thirst. Draw near with faith. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. 
the body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Having been nourished with the body and blood of Christ, let us go from this table fully affirmed and assured of our God, who is with us and for us, who gives us his love, his grace, and his peace. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. As we go from this table, let us remind ourselves of the words of St. Paul who said, when we have God with us, what shall we fear? We have a God who is always with us and for us, who gives us his love, his grace, and his peace. Therefore, go in peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep me in eternal life. We join in saying the final prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all people. Amen. We join in singing our final hymn, I will offer up my life.
blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, in the power of the Spirit, to live and work to God's praise and glory. Thanks be to God. Amen.